just to kind of um, set this up again, we're not trying to uh, spoil anything in the main story. We're not going to show you guys stuff that is going to be kind of very important to what's yeah. going on. Because we don't, again, we don't want to spoil the game for you. Yeah. We want you guys to pick it up and play through it and be excited on your own. Mm -mm. But we do want to show off a little bit more about the cultures yes. that you guys created for this game. And so we've got a fun open world mission. Yeah, this yeah. is one. This is called the uh, Spirit Totem, and the idea oh, is uh, a part you haven't seen here. You've you've met someone who's told you uh, that uh, one of your fellow Wenja was going out in the world to place a totem, and he hasn't returned. So something's happened to him. So so your mission is now go uh, go find this guy, grab his totem, the totem, and you know and place the totem. Uh, spirit totems are, are important uh, to the Wenja. They're a tribe that is um, uh, uh, animistic. Uh, they believe in uh, uh, all things have a spirit. So not just uh, uh, people, but they believe plants, even uh, inanimate objects like um, uh, rocks and the tree. Oh, wow. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. The rocks uh, have a spirit. So uh, placing a, uh, um, a totem is a way to... Uh, uh, they want to place it so that they, they believe that the, then they have a spirit kind of watching over them. Okay, like so a, that's like a protection almost. Exactly, exactly. So that's why it's important for them to uh, place these totems. And you'll do that throughout the world. And this is just one mission that mm -hmm. uh, shows you about that. And uh, where are we? <laughs> where are we I'm trying in to this remember fantastic which land of Uros? Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <It's so nice. laughs> Oh, Ooh, okay. Already some, uh, is this the guy? No, okay. So this isn't the guy who... No. No. <laughs> this isn't the body you're looking <laughs> this for. This isn't the body you're <laughs> looking for. <laughs> but I think you've got to be careful because I believe there's uh, Udam. Uh, yeah, there they are. There's Udam around here. Yeah. In this area. Ooh. So we're going to have to watch. It. Man, good, good shot, shot JJ. Man. Well, oh, landing, good it's... jump, too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And I think there's I would have definitely fallen on that one. Yep. And that is why we brought in JJ. the ringer. Yeah. <laughs> JJ. Yep. JJ Elite. JJ Elite. <laughs> JJ He's Elite. gone from noob to elite. I like that. That's nice. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so we are getting a ton of questions in mm. the chat, yeah. which we're going to kind of hold on to for a bit later. Yep. We but just know that we see you. That was uh, yeah. Hunter Vision you were using there? Which is great. Yeah, we, yeah. Uh, the Hunter Vision, I think we've talked about it a bit before, but it, it was Shoot important. Shoot a deer. <laughs> Shoot a deer. <laughs> yeah, Shoot yeah. a deer while you're looking for a, a spirit totem. <laughs> the, uh, the Hunter Vision's uh, important, uh, uh, an important feature. This is the Stone Age, and uh, survival was paramount. So, so their sense of uh, awareness of nature around them was, was key to survival, and, and it was highly tuned. So for us, we wanted to make sure we had this, this feature in the game that reflects that. And... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it, it just highlights all the things you need to see. You can track animals with that as well. You can track people if you wound somebody. Oh. I yes. find that in the game, I guess because, oh my god, you're nice. just destroying these people. Yeah. <laughs> because we're dealing with a Stone Age man who is making all of their equipment from what was around them, I find it so oh hard no. to spot these guys. Because they're so well kind of camouflaged. Yeah, I know what you mean, right? They aren't. They, they, they don't have a bright uh, uh, red or uh, uh, like they're not really flashy in the in the colors, or you don't see a vehicle with headlights coming yeah. up at you. Yeah. Oh, you set him, set him on fire. Well done. That's one way to see him. <laughs> so yeah, several approaches to this mission. Yeah, someone in the chat noticed that animals don't always die straight on. Yeah. And they don't. I mean, unless you kind of really land a critical headshot. They don't die, and so you can use your hunter vision to kind of chase after them. Yeah, exactly. That's where the blood becomes important. And the, ah, there Aww. we go. Okay, so we found Sorry, the totem. Bud. Found Poor it. guy. He uh, probably fell from oh. there or something like that. Nice. This is a kind of cool kind of cave painting. Yeah, I noticed that. Huh? It, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a. If you see that, right there. So what's cool? You see that? Uh, it's an indication. If you look up. There's a grappling oh. hook. Oh. <laughs> so it's okay. literally you, to kind of tell you, you that... Gives you a little clue that hence. you've got something up above that can help you climb. Okay. Someone did ask, is there a grappling hook? Yes. But there you go. Grappling claw. Oh, oh see, there's another claw. one. And if yeah. we look up, bingo. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even go. notice. Good eye, Kevin. Good yeah, eye. There you go. Yeah. 
You've still got some Udam, I think, uh, yeah. Yeah. roaming yeah. around <coughs> after you. We actually have a winner from the last uh, the giveaway. giveaway. Yeah. So it's Ma Pilgrim. Nice. That was easy pilgrim. to understand. Ma Pilgrim. Uh, to, uh, to yeah, Ma pilgrim. Congratulations to you. Yay, congratulations. The Twitch moderators will you know, get in touch and ask you where you need the t-shirt and the hoodie to be delivered. <laughs> where is that? Looks like some bad stuff is going down uh -oh. over here. Uh-oh. <laughs> what is this? So this is what I love about this game. It's like, you know, there's there's so many more animals. Uh, so, it, you, like, you get your threats from everywhere. You get them mm. from the animals. You get them from the uh, from the uh, enemy tribes. It, it it really hits on that primal sense of mm. anything and everywhere. everything can kill me yeah. at any time. <laughs> or can Great de job. deke past you. <laughs> <laughs> and we've placed uh, the There we go. What and a beautiful like totem. It is You've nice. done well, JJ. Thanks. Ooh, good job. Oh, yeah. oh nice. Job. One last jump. Congrats. That looked a lot shallower, a lot more shallow <laughs> than it actually was. I thought, oh, yeah, no, that's right. not a good move, pal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, congrats. We kind of wander around. Give us a, a nice view of this. Scenery? Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Matthias loves his scenery. I do. So look, look to the, look to the, right up there. So you can see one thing that's cool. This is the Stone Age, and it's it's uh, um, after uh, the Ice Age. I was gonna well say, is after that a the Ice Age, but still, yeah, exactly. The glaciers uh, uh, in the game are are massive, like we like we mm. certainly never see on Earth now, and that's just a reflection of uh, the Ice Age that uh, receded really cool. out of uh, Oros. Really. Yeah, there's some beautiful vistas that show yeah. off just that sort of stuff. Yeah. The trees too. Untouched by man. Untouched by man. You get that feeling when you're going through here because the trees are so massive. Mm. Like even from here, looking at that one way over, oh, yeah. you know, we're far it's from huge. it, but you can see how big it is. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that kind of you have a hard time understanding unless you're playing the game is how much bigger everything is. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah everything from the, the plant life, the trees to the animals as well. Mm hmm. Very cool. Yeah, like even the wolves, large. you get a good sense that wow, these are these are big wolves. I feel bad. There's like there's a lot of good questions in the chat, yeah. but it's a lot of stuff that I'm like, I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> I don't want to spoil this for you. But it's a good transition. Should we move to the uh, the the next the next question segment? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's get some uh, let's get some questions. Some questions going. from the chat. Absolutely. Um. So. We've seen it a lot in the chat, and we saw it in the when we asked people to ask us questions on social. Um, will there be a story, and can you tell us a bit about it? Yeah, for sure. Yep. There is a story in the game, uh, absolutely. Uh, you play as uh, Takar, and Takar is a um, uh, he's a hunter. He's the last surviving hunter uh, of his party, and they have been leaving a, a barren uh, land and heading towards Oros. And y the game takes place in the land of Oros. And uh, he's going there to meet more Wenja. He's part of the Wenja tribe, and he wants to meet more Wenja uh, uh, to reunite with his people. When he arrives in Oros, he finds that the, the Wenja have all been scattered uh, across the Oh! You were saying? Oh. Say. No, I'm distracted. Oh, <laughs> JJ. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well JJ. done. Well done. If you'd used your hunter vision, you would have seen him. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, so you arrive in uh, the land of Oros, and you find that the Wenja uh, have been scattered. They're not really a united tribe. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, they've been uh, um, attacked by rival tribes who are mm -hmm. fighting for resources. So your job is to, you know, uh, try to uh, uh, reunite those people, fight off the many predators that you're going to come across, yes, we have seen. Uh, as we've seen, and the Udam and other tribes, and uh, ultimately become the apex predator uh, in, okay. the, uh, in the world of Oros. Awesome. That kind of is a, a little high level uh, of the story. Yep. And, uh, Man, these guys are just going for a walk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure they are. Yeah, they don't hey. even see you. Oh, oh. oh. Wait, you were saying? Oh, dang, oh. that's cold. He wasn't a warrior. No. <laughs> she was startled by an animal. Dang it, JJ. Okay. All right. Should we take it uh, to the questions that we listed from the fans? Yes. So, oh, yeah, yes. Uh, we just went over a bit of the story questions. Yes. Um, so, 
obviously people who saw the trailer, yeah. people who are listening to the game right now. Mm -mm. That's not English. It's mm, not English. No, it's not. no, definitely not. So that was a uh, that was a <laughs> something we thought about um, when we were starting the game. We we're looking. Okay, ten thousand BC, Stone Age, the, Mes uh, the Mesolithic period. There was no English. There was no. There was no. Uh, any modern language, any mm. of the modern languages that we have, they, they, ju they just weren't around. So, and we thought, well, do, you know, do we want to use that anyway? And we really felt like we want to make this game immersive. It's, it's immersive in terms of the art, in terms of the world, the animals you see. It should, that should be reflected in the language. So we decided, okay, we're going to go and we're going to uh, create a new language. And we didn't just arbitrarily make it up. What we did was we looked at, uh, well, what do we know of the languages that were on there? There's no written history, but they do know that they spoke a version of what's called Proto-Indo-European. Mm -hmm. um, Fancy. Proto-Indo-European. Nice <laughs> and they, they call it Pi for short. There you Fantastic. Go. Okay. Fantastic. So, uh, so we decided, okay, well, let's base our languages off of that. Uh, I am certainly no Pi expert, so we, <laughs> we went to the... Uh, we, we brought some uh, linguists with us, mm -hmm. and they helped us uh, uh, figure this out. So it's Andrew Bird and Brenna Bird. They're, they're uh, linguists whose specialty is uh, Proto-Indo-European. Mm -hmm. And uh, JJ, I think you need to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's distracted now. And uh, uh, so what we did was we brought them on, and they helped us uh, craft oh. the language. And not only just, we didn't do just one language, so the wind just speak a, a language. Uh, the Udam also speak their own language, uh, which they just call uh, Udam, mm. and uh, it's a version of Winja. Okay. And then we have another like an tribe. Accent. What's that? Like an accent of Winja. Accent. It's a little more simple, a little more because <laughs> they're a more simple tribe. They're a more okay. monosyllabic sort of tribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we had a have a third uh, tribe that uh, JC was mentioning called the Izila, mm. and they're a little more advanced, and they also speak yet another language in the game. Uh, so you're going to hear those throughout. You've been hearing them here yeah. uh, in, the, in the game. Uh, oh, look at that. See? Oh, the scenery. See? Look at it. Oh, the, this beautiful. Vista. the glaciers are fantastic. I love it. Yeah. And people have asked, can you kind of turn off the mini-map uh, mini in the HUD? And like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you, yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. you, can you said you played that way, right? Yes. Yeah. You can I haven't played that way. It was show this? Mm. deadly. Yeah. No, but actually you can. We're not going to show it now, but you can deactivate all the HUD and like just play it uh, like with without, that. Any, Vision. without any indications, which is, you know, pretty difficult and hardcore to play it, but you can. No, it's actually cool. possible. Yeah, once you lose that like little targeting dot, throwing that spear is just throwing and praying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, no, I would not be good in any of that. <laughs> I need my HUD. <laughs> um, and I think, because kind of people asked if... Um, if they're going to have to read subtitles. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, uh, well, as you saw here, you've been hearing Wenja, and there's, there's no subtitles. In the open world, we, we uh, didn't include subtitles because that just becomes too busy. It's, it's too much to try and, try and watch and play at the same time. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, when you're getting missions, for sure, we, we, we do want you to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the, the missions, uh, uh, when you're meeting new characters... Those moments were are going to be subtitled, mm -hmm. and but what's interesting, what, what what we found is as we're playing, um, it's the, the language. There's a real logic to it. It really makes sense. And so as you're playing, we found that you're actually able to start recognizing some terms and picking up things. And so I think it's going to be cool. I think fans will be, uh, you know, they'll be able to understand a lot more of the language than uh, oh. maybe they might expect that they'll be able to. There's always a turtle. There's always or a tortoise, I guess. Leave <laughs> them alone, JJ. <laughs> <laughs> what have they done don't, to you? Don't hassle those. And there was a question in the chat from Dosaurus. Can the crocodile move? What's that? Yes. Uh, there was a question in the chat. Can the crocodile move? Oh, yeah. And oh, they thought it was just a it. stationary yeah, yeah, crocodile? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they must have come in late. They just missed uh, JJ almost getting... Uh, oh. oh, no. JJ, get out of there. Oh, get out of there, JJ. <laughs> Go in the water. You're going to die. You're going to die. No, it's good. Okay. See, one, of the, one of the animal behaviors that uh, we kind of didn't know about when I was playing through the game was uh -oh. that, oh, jeez. Oh, oh, no. Oh, that's oh, a no. bite no. fish. It's no, you're going to die. Bite fish sounds like a oh, no, real okay. kind of wenja. Just a cuddly little fish. Yeah. It's a bite fish. 
It was a, it's a good transition to another question that some fans had. Uh, what what um, type of animals were being used? And we saw. Yeah, so we've seen versions. a whole bunch. Uh, it was fun doing the, uh, you know, the, the prehistoric uh, period because mm. we were able to 